The furthest I've ever driven was nine hours, and that was to New Mexico. Now, I'm driving 19 hours to Utah, Camas, Utah to be exact. I'm headed to Utah to take the Archon Ready Group's two-day pistol and rifle course. Archon Ready Group is what happens when you take the gun company Salient Arms International and Archon Firearms USA and tell them to create a training company. Salient Arms is one of the most infamous gun companies in the industry. I've done a video or two on some of their guns. Besides me being a fan of their guns, I've always been impressed by their aesthetic, branding, and innovation. I've already done a video on the Archon Type D, and I walked away pretty damn impressed with what was a very ambitious gun. All that being said, these two companies coming together to create a training company intrigued me immensely. So I called Peter and told him that we're going to Utah to film Rush Hour 4. Our route to Utah took us from Texas to New Mexico, then to Colorado, then to Utah. Sadly, 90% of the trip was driving through Texas. I love my Texas, but Texas is so visually boring to drive through, it feels like time just says, you know what? I'm just gonna take a nap. New Mexico and Colorado, however, is a whole different story. So why did I drive 19 hours to take this shooting course? Let's find out. Day one of the course was all handguns. But before I talk about that, let's talk about the instructors, Dan and Billy. Dan retired from the U.S. Army in 2015 after over 20 years in the Army Special Operations, including seven years with the 1st Ranger Battalion and over 13 years as an operator in the Army Special Missions Unit. He has over 500 real-world combat missions hunting high-value targets and conducting hostage rescue operations. Billy spent 22 years with the United States Army with 17 of those years with the Army Special Missions Unit. He has 13 combat tours with roughly 800 real-world direct action missions. After retiring in 2015, he worked as a contractor teaching marksmanship and tactics to current special operations forces. He has been shooting competitively since 2007. In typical fashion, I got all that information from the About Me section of the website. Let me tell it, Billy and Tony Starks are the same people differently. And that doesn't make sense, I know, but it would if you met Billy in person. Daniel, on the other hand, is like a tactical Moby. Not just because he kind of sort of looks like him, but because he reminds me of Moby's music. Very chill, but assuringly intense. The Archon Reddit group prides itself on what I like to call tactical progressive overload where you start with simple but not exactly easy fundamentals and progressively increase the difficulty until you hit the mark intended for that course. This two-day course was broken up into four parts. The first part of the first day, we started with the basics. The first drill consisted of us standing at 10 yards away from our target and trying to shoot the smallest group you can shoot at a slow pace. This drill was more for the instructors than it was for us. This drill gave the instructors a chance to see where everyone was with their fundamentals. Not to grade or judge, but to determine in real time how to teach the course. That's Blau, a DJ and producer out of Vegas. Blau pulled up in an all-white Aston Martin. And if you know anything about me, I love cars, and I'm especially in love with Aston Martins. So I did what every gun and car guy who finds someone who's also in the cars and guns does. I made him my friend, whether he wanted to be or not. As the first half of the day progressed, the instructors with systematic efficiency went down the list of fundamentals. It was by no means in a rigid fashion. The skill level in this class varied incredibly from this is my first class to I do this type of thing for a living, and I watched them flow like tactical jazz musicians, varying their demeanor and teaching style to each level of competence, all without unnecessarily slowing down the class. The first thing I noticed about Billy and Daniel is that they're not afraid to shoot in front of the class. Sometimes you get instructors who don't really like to shoot in front of the class. Not because they can't shoot, but because they have their egos invested in looking like the perfect shooter. And as anyone who does a lot of shooting knows, there's no such All thing. Right. No matter how good you are, you will throw a shot. You will miss a still target. It's just the reality of shooting. 
and Billy and Daniel don't hesitate to shoot in front of the class because they treat each pull of the trigger as a teaching moment. You can tell they're there to teach, not show you how awesome they are. All right, so 5.31, so he took two seconds off, but had two mics on that first one, the first target and the second target. Going hot. The second half of the day is where things really picked up. We started getting into more advanced stuff like drawing from the holster and speed reloads. I know you're thinking, how hard can it be to draw from a holster? And it's that type of mentality that will have you accidentally shooting yourself as drawing from a holster short of running full speed with your finger on the trigger is one of the more potentially dangerous acts you can do with a gun if you're careless about it. Where I really got happy is when we started adding movement to the shooting because that's when the steel came out and anyone who knows me knows I love to shoot on steel. Yeah, mag change. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one miss. <laughs> you still got it. You still got it in twelve point seven eight. <laughs> I was like, why is everybody just looking at me? What did I do? Wrong? <laughs> <laughs> we ended the day with a long distance shooting with a pistol contest that I didn't win, and I'm a sore loser, so I don't really want to talk about all that. Day two is when the rifles came out. My favorite platform is the AR. So I was looking forward to this part of the course. More specifically, I was looking forward to running my salient arms gray rifle. It's one thing to shoot your gun on a range by yourself, but it's a whole nother thing to bring it to a course and run your gun. It changes your entire relationship with that gun. You'll either love it to death afterwards or want to throw it in the garbage. There is no in between. There were a lot of good shooters at this course. So we did a little work on paper and then hit the ground running on steel. The one thing I've learned about shooting is the importance of efficiency of movement. The smallest things make the biggest difference and the perception of speed isn't always actually speed. The instructors did a good job keeping us focused on that efficiency of movement. Speaking of movement, yeah, so I struggled with the barricade a little bit, largely because I was too tight to get into some of the positions. Add the fact that I had to also shoot offhand with some of the positions, and I was definitely out of my element a little bit. So, the question still remains. Why did I drive 19 hours to take this shooting course? If I'm going to be literal, it's so that I can film and put this video together for you all to watch. But more importantly, I drove 19 hours to take the course because I take my training with a firearm seriously. And because destination shooting is an underrated form of vacation, yes, I could have waited until they held a class in Dallas, Texas, where I currently live. But when you love shooting as much as I love shooting, you start using shooting as a justification to explore the world. The different cities and states you drive through, the people you meet, the places you stay, the food you eat, it's all part of that experience. So I guess in short, I drove 19 hours to take this shooting course because I needed an excuse to travel and to shoot. I mean, think about it. How many people can say they came back from a vacation knowing how to better protect themselves and had a blast doing it? Think of all the money you'll save never buying another pistol though, right? <laughs> Just get those rifles. All you gotta do is the same thing, only better. Okay. Perfect. 302. Very good.
Today, there was another growing gun confiscation request in all 50 of our states requesting to confiscate our AR-15s. We want the government to know what would happen if they tyrannically passed their so-called assault weapons ban. I will not comply is a symbolization of defiance against politicians, anti-gunners, and any other tyrannical entity looking to deprive you or your Second Amendment right as put forth in the Constitution of the United States. I'm sure the YouTube algorithm is going to do a phenomenal job of suppressing this message. So please share this video with as many people as you can so we can beat the algorithm and get our two-way message out to the masses. Also, don't forget to like this video and leave a comment and hit the bell and subscribe button. Let my voice be your voice and let them know you want to keep America tactical because the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed wasn't a suggestion, it was a directive. Also, if you're wondering where to purchase your AR-15s are essential, I will not comply. I am the militia. I lost all my guns in a boating accident and your state specific Keep America Tactical shirt. Click the link next to my head or the link in the description section. Or if you're watching this on a mobile device, tap the small triangle on the lower right hand side of this video and click the link in the description.